Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to work through 16 different examples of solving multi-step equations when the variable is on both sides. Now, when we have a variable on both sides, not only are we going to be looking for the solution to the equation, but we're also looking for examples when there are infinite many solutions as well as no solutions at all. So I'll explain that a little bit further as we get to it. But the main important idea here is when we have a variable on both sides, we have to get the variable to the same side to apply our inverse operations. As well as like in our last video, if we have parentheses or any kind of simplifying we need to do, we're going to want to apply that before we apply our inverse operations. So let's just kind of work through these problems and I think everything that I'm speaking about right now will make a lot more sense. So in this first example, you can see that we have a 2a on both sides, right? I don't want to apply my inverse operations to isolate an a because I have two of them, right? And so therefore, before I do anything, I want to get my variables to the same side. That's always kind of like my first approach that I like to apply for these problems. Now, what's interesting though is when I subtract a 2a, I get 2a minus 2a is 0a, right? So I just get the equation 3 equals 3. So 3 equals 3 is always going to be true. Right? And what that means is it doesn't matter what the va value of a is because a times 2 plus 3, you can see that this is actually the exact same expression on either side of the equal sign. So this equation is always going to be true. Therefore, we say this has infinite many solutions. An interesting way to start off, right? So let's go and take a look at another example. So in another example here, we have 3x plus 4 equals 5x minus 10. I think you guys would agree that these are not the same, right? So it's not going to have that infinite many solutions. But, so what we want to do is we want to get the variable to the same side. Now, which side should we choose? Should we choose the left side or should we choose the right side? In my opinion, it's always easier to solve whatever is going to make the variable positive because I think if you can avoid negative numbers, um, then it's usually going to result in making less mistakes. So what I'm going to do is if I could subtract a 5x on both sides or I could subtract a 3x on both sides. And I recognize if I subtract a 3x on both sides, that will result in a positive 2x on the right-hand side. Now, a lot of students always want to solve for the variable on the left-hand side, which is fine because typically that's how most equations students are used to. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that method. Um, I just have found in my experience, it's usually easier for me to solve when the variable is going to, or the coefficient of the variable is positive. But now you can see by getting my variable to the same side, I now have a two-step equation. So now I can just apply my inverse operations to solve. So that's why I added a 10 on both sides and I get 14 equals 2x divided by 2, 7 equals x. So for the next one, again, we have the same idea of getting the variables to the same side. In this case, I'll subtract the 4q. Now in this case, um, you could also get the numbers to the same side like first, but I always just find it easier because since we're trying to use our inverse operations on one variable, it's just easier to combine the variables first. So in this case, I get 3 equals, oops, I'm sorry. That's going to be 5q minus 4q is just q, right? So you could write that as a 1q or we can just leave that as 3 plus q is going to equal to 9. And now to isolate my q, I'll just subtract a 3 on both sides. So therefore, q is going to equal 6. Um, next example, you can see I have a b on both sides, so I'm going to add a 9b here. Therefore, that gives me an 11b plus 4 equals negative 18. Now I will subtract the 4. And I know my wording looks a little rough there. So 11b equals a negative 22, and then just divide by 11. Oops, not a negative 11, positive 11. And that gives me b equals a negative 2. All right, so for the next example, um, you can see we have a negative n. But again, like if we want to undo this negative n, like if I needed to get that to the other side, I could just add it. Now, in this case, both my n's are negative. So in that, when that's the case, um, I usually like to always get the variable to the left-hand side. So I'm going to add the n to this other side. Now, again, this has, something interesting happens. Negative n plus n, right, gives us 0 n. Basically, this gives, now gives us an equation of negative 24 equals 5. Well, negative 24 never equals 5, right? So therefore, it doesn't matter what the value of n is, these two, these two expressions are never going to be equal to each other. So therefore, in this case, we'd have no solution. All right. 
Um, so that's one thing to kind of look at when you look at the coefficients on both sides. Um, if they are going to be the same, then when you combine them to get them to the same side, you are going to eliminate that variable. So you're going to produce either an infinite many solutions or a no solutions. Now in this case, you have multiple variables of the x, or of k, I'm sorry, your variable. So what we want to do before we get everything to the same side, we're going to want to simplify our expression. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is um, simplify our expression. So k minus 3k is going to be a negative 2k. 6k minus 8k is again a negative 2k plus 5. And again, you can see how this produces now my variables with the exact same coefficients. So now when I add my 2k to both sides, I get a 0, right? 0k zero is 0 equals 5, which again, that is never going to work. So therefore, that is no solution. All right, and then we can do that um, again. Now let's go and work on one where we have parentheses. So again, just like over here in this example, we wanted to simplify our sides before we applied our inverse operations. In this case, when we have parentheses, that's exactly the same thing we want to do. We want to apply distributive property to simplify them. So in this case, I get a 6x minus 12 equals a 6x minus 12. Now again, you can see these are the exact same expressions. I could use my inverse operations if I wanted to, but you can see it's the exact same expression on the left and on the right. So therefore, this is a infinite many solutions. Okay, so it might not have been as obvious to you looking at it from the um, how it was written, but once you go ahead and simplify it, you can see that if you were to solve for the x by subtracting the 6x on both sides, you get negative 12, which equals negative 12, which is always true. All right, um, now in this one, we have some g's here on the left side and the g over here on the right side. But again, we want to simplify this first before we get them to the same side. Now, the interesting thing that's going on here is I have the negative on the outside of the parentheses, but it's to the right of the parentheses. So that's not multiplying. You're not multiplying this negative times g plus four, right? What's this? The way that this reads from left to right is the quantity g plus four minus three g. So we actually don't even need they, those parentheses at all, okay? They're, the grouping symbols, really, there's really no need for them. So therefore, I have g uh, minus 3g, so I can just rearrange these. So therefore, that's going to be 4 minus 2g equals 1 plus g. And now, to get my g's to the same side, I'll add a 2g to both sides. And therefore, I'll get 4 equals 1 plus 3g. Subtract 1 on both sides, 3 equals 3g, and then divide by 3. So one is equal to g. So hopefully you can see that, you know, I had some simplifying, then I got the variables to the same side. And my main goal when solving these multi-step equations is to get to our two-step equation. Because then once I get to my two-step equation, I can then use my inverse operations as well as my um, properties of equality and reverse order of operations to go ahead and solve. All right, so let's go and get into some more examples here. Um, so for the next one, I have 5G. Um, now this one, again, looks like the grouping symbol, but again, we don't need this grouping symbol here, right? Um, the, actually, I can just rearrange this. I can rewrite this problem without a grouping symbol. I don't really need the plus negative 5. I can just rewrite that as minus 5 plus G equals 1 minus G, all right? So 5G plus 3G is going to be an 8G minus 5 equals 1 minus G. Now in this case, I'm going to want to put the G to the other side, right? So I'm going to add a G to both sides, that gives me 9g minus 5 equals 1. Now I can add a 5. 9g equals 6, and then divide by 9. So g equals a 6 thirds. I can divide a 3 in the top and the bottom, which is going to give me a 2 thirds. Um, the next example, before I get the variables to the same side, what I'll need to do is go ahead and get rid of my parentheses. And again, I can get rid of my parentheses by applying distributive property. So I'll distribute that 2 to both sides. So therefore, I get a 4x minus 5 equals a 4x plus 2. And again, I see that my variables have the same coefficients. I say, uh-oh, when I subtract a 4x, that's going to eliminate my variable here, right? That's going to leave me with a negative 4 is equal to 2, which again, that never works. So that is no solution. So even though it doesn't look like it's no solution from the beginning, once you simplify it and get it to that two-step equation, um, 
you, you recognize that since the variables have the same coefficient, then they're going to um, be eliminated and whatever left out, whatever you left have, whatever you have left over is either going to produce no solution if they're not the same or infinite many solutions if they are the same. Um, question number 11 here is 2a plus 3 equals 1 half times 6 plus 4a. So again, we're going to want to distribute this 1 half to simplify our side. So I have 2a plus 3 equals 3 plus 2a. And again, you can see that these are exact same expressions. Again, everything has just been switched around. So therefore, this is infinite many solutions. Which is actually, I believe, the same as the first problem. Right? Was that the same? Yeah. Interesting. Um, all right, and let's go ahead and do it again. Again, another example here. I distribute these and I get 2y plus 4 equals 2y plus 4. So again, you can see that these are exactly the same. So this is again another example of infinite many solutions. All right. Um, question number 13 now, again, we have these two sets of parentheses. So again, we, before we get the variable to the same side, we have to get rid of the parentheses. We'll get rid of the parentheses by applying the distributive property. So in this case, I get 5y minus 20 equals 14y plus 7. Okay, and then again, I'm just distributing those values. Now I'm going to get the variable to the same side. I can either pick the left side or the right side, but I feel the right side is going to be easier So um, because then my coefficient here will be positive. So I'll have a negative 20 equals, let's see, this is going to be a negative 9y plus 7. Now I'm at a two-step equation, so I can just use my inverse operations here to solve. So this is a negative 27 equals a negative 9y divide by negative 9, and I get a positive 3 is equal to y. Next example, I have only one set of parentheses, so I'm just going to distribute here. So this gives me a 3q minus 15 equals a 2q plus 10. Now, all I need to do is get my variables to the same side. I don't, you could choose any way you want to, but if I subtract a 2q, then I'll get a q minus 15 equals a 10. Now, I just need to add a 15 to both sides. q equals 25. Um, all right, question number 15, again, is another example of distributing here. So I'll distribute those, and then here I'll distribute this negative. So in doing that, I get a 2a minus 8 equals a 4a minus 2a minus 4. Whew, a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and now simplify this right-hand side. So 2a minus 8 equals 4a minus 2a is 2a minus 4. Well, again, hopefully you recognize here that these two equations are not going to be the same. The coefficient, the variables have the same coefficient, but the constants are different. So therefore, I can just say these are not true. So therefore, we can say no solution. All right, and then let's go and look at this last example here. Again, you're going to want to apply distributive property. So I get a 6x minus 12 equals a 6x minus 12. And again, you can see that these are exactly the same, just like actually that's the exact same problem over there. So we can say it's infinite many solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video. And if you need more examples, I have plenty more in my playlist. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next example.